The mayor of Williams Lake and city staff hosted a press conference this afternoon. Previous to answering questions, the mayor read a prepared statement. The city of Williams Lake has completed its preliminary investigation into the chlorine incident at Sam Ketchum Pool at the Caribou Memorial Recreation Complex, February 26th. Sorry to interrupt, it's Will here from CBC. Could the staff member announce who he or she is? Sure. Yeah. It's uh, Jeff Payton, Director of Community Services, answering. Uh, the answer to that question is, is at the moment is we, we don't know. Obviously, we're working, or have begun to work as quickly as possible to get the pool reopened. Uh, ultimately, um, that decision will be up to WorkSafe and uh, Interior Health to decide. Um, and uh, that's where, kind of where it is at this point. So really, there's no, there's no answer. It'll be open when it's safe to open. Okay. The one thing that we were a little disappointed at speaking on the club's behalf is that we didn't hear anything from the city at all, officially from the city as to can we offer your input or listen, we're sorry about what happened. We didn't hear anything about trying to help out with what happened on deck. You know, we had swimmers in the water, we had parents on deck, we had coaches, but we never got, I guess I'm looking for maybe an apology of sorts that uh, we had a lot of kids in danger on our behalf. Yes. And we never heard anything. Okay. So I, it was my understanding that there was some communication going on between um, the staff and, and the uh, swim club, uh, so I didn't know otherwise. Jeff and I have had some informal passing in the hallway kind of heads up kind of things, but nothing from city saying. So it was also my understanding that you were also getting all of the press releases as they were available? Yeah, but it's not exactly a, hey, geez, we're sorry about uh, putting the gas in the whatever happened, I mean, that's what we're kind of looking for. I mean, not only us, but it's the Wave Riders in Cornell and the yes. Barracudas in Prince George. And you get to a point where you wonder, will we be able to invite them even back for another swimming? Are they going to want to come back? Okay, so as, as mayor of the city, Dale, I, you know, I, I hear what you're saying. And uh, I, as I said, the first priority was just dealing with, obviously, the incident and making sure that everybody uh, was, was was healthy and released. As I said, it was very good news to hear that that, that eight-year-old was released today, and that was our primary focus. Uh, and then starting the investigation, and then of course looking at next next steps. And if any shape, you know, any way that we have excluded you or not um, recognized that, I, I can take as mayor full responsibility for that, and I and I apologize for not uh, communicating uh, in a in a way that would have been probably more beneficial. Because yeah, we just want to help and yes. We were all on deck and saw what happened. Although there's I, lifeguards advi um, lifeguards advi no the uh, maintenance person advising lifeguards to clear the deck. I have an issue with that one because the lifeguards immediately saw the kids in danger in the water and started pulling them out before the maintenance person advised anybody. That's what was on deck. That's what I saw. Okay, that's what I thought too. Yeah. Okay. So your preliminary report may be needing some more input. Okay, and so the preliminary report was the result of uh, interviewing many different uh, people from that team that was, was uh, so we received that information yeah. as well. Because we've had like 70 people at the event of the hospital may offer input on that preliminary report if it's needed, as always. Okay, thank you. Dale, could you go with your first and last name and tell us who you're with? Uh, Dale Taylor with the Bluefin Swim Club, President. Uh, Mayor, uh, we've heard from, from students that there was this orange liquid that, that was seen. Can you talk a bit more about uh, what it looked like when, when this chlorine was, was released? Okay, so I think it's important to note that we're talking about two different pools, right? There was the main pool where the swimmers were, and then the, the pool that the, the chlorine was released into was the waiting pool over in the side that was empty, and it was just being refilled. So I'll turn that over to, to Jeff Payton to, to answer question. Sure, yeah, there there would have been no orange li liquid. There's nothing that would have caused anything orange. Uh, what what came out, and we actually have it on video, on the waiting, the waiting pool was uh, highly chlorinated water, uh, and it was, it was a slight, uh, slightly green, definitely not orange. Okay, so this, this green, greenish looking liquid would have been seen then as, as it was coming out. Yeah, it'd be hard to miss. So that's at the bottom of the waiting pool. I'm just wondering, uh, you, you, know, you, you mentioned that uh, a staff member did see this uh, as the chlorine was being released. Could anything different, uh, could anything have been done to prevent people inside? 
inside the pool or at, at the area there for, from being injured? I think, well, I mean, there's always things you could do. I mean, that procedure of filling the hot tub or the waiting pool has been done a thousand times without incident ever in the past. Um, I think the evacuation process probably went as quickly as we could hope given the circumstances. Okay, and uh, I, uh, probably the same question as Dale there, but any, any indication on, on when we will know or when the final um, report will be released? Not at this time. Thank you. Will that final investigation report be available for public, I suppose? I will turn that over to the staff just to... So Dale, components of it will be? I mean, there may be some pieces that have to, you know, black out names or something like that, you know, to protect, um, um, you know, staff members, individual staff members. Oh, sure. Yeah, but the basic report of what, what happened over there, uh, the findings of the report, will be a public document. Okay. Because all my other questions are more or less about that, but it's too easy to speculate in that. Yeah, the if you don't have the final report, you can't say. Exactly. The yeah. report isn't, I mean, we're trying to give you information as soon as we get it. So, and, and we only have preliminary information right now, so we're trying to give you that preliminary information, but there's a fair bit of information more to come, and, and that may involve talking to some of the people that were on the deck to, to get a better idea from their perspective of what happened during this event. So no one was interviewed yet who was actually there, physically present? Uh, no. Um, non-staff members have been interviewed at this point, okay? So the, the idea is, is that we're trying to find out the, the main focus of the, the initial part of the investigation is what led to the, to the actual chlorine being released at the pool. Um, the, the issue of, of maybe how we dealt with that um, is we still have to investigate. Um, how many staff were on? in the pool that day? There's two lifeguards and two facility maintenance staff. Is that um, more people because of the event or is that normal? That's it's completely normal for a swim meet. Yeah. I think that she means on deck, not in the facility. Well, in the pool area. There's two lifeguards in the pool area yeah. and the facility maintenance person was there when one of them was right there when it occurred. Okay. So it was three. Yeah. They're all connected by radios and communication and all that kind of good stuff as well. So. That's the tough part is when you've got a hockey tournament going on and you've got swim meets and you've got all these events going on, pulling people too thin perhaps, but that will come out in the investigation, I assume. And children weren't in the small pool when it was being filled? No. In the green water? No. No. And uh, when the when the pool was um, renovated, what year was that? Do you, you remember what year it was renovated? It's been renovated many times. The last time that there was the referendum, whether we have a new pool. 2006. Yeah, it has nothing to do with mechanical at that point. No. Has the mechanical rooms been the same since the pool was initially set up? More or less, a lot of the equipment has been being replaced through the years. As it as it came to end of life, but it's changed, you know, it's been 30 years, it's changed dramatically. I haven't been here for 30 years, but it won't be the same as it was 30 years ago. Or piece, the piece of equipment that that failed, you can replace that piece of equipment with a new piece of equipment is, is, is always an option. Um, that would be the, the way to fix it. Whether or not we want to pursue with that option it has to be decided at a later date. With how we were going to be moving forward mm -hmm. to ensure so could it be closed for weeks or months or do you, do you have any idea? Weeks, months? It, it could be weeks or longer. Yeah. It will not be reopened until there's a safe, satisfactory system to re-disinfect that water. So we'd be right in, in seeing if the investigation comes out, the report comes out, but then there are a few more political steps it has to go to, it has to go to I uh, committee the whole joint. Where does it proceed politically? So it's. Um, so what's the options? Once once the report is, is finalized and the options become available, there's always uh, budget considerations to be made. That would we'd be taken to joint, uh, and then joint makes a decision on which option to go to, go to, and then that would have to go to back to the prospective bodies, city and the CRD board, for for final approval. Mm -hmm. just, just to clarify, then this was not human error. 
this was not the result of human error. Uh, there's a process that's also in place, and we mentioned that in the press release as well, that Interior, Interior Health has to uh, give its final okay as, as well as the worker, what is it called, the uh, WorkSafe BC also has to be a part of it. So there's a whole bigger process of safety that uh, comes into play before we can officially reopen as well. And, and I think it's safe to say we will not be looking at just that general component. We are going to be looking at the entire disinfection system to ensure that what, what the system that we you know move forward with um, is, is suitable and uh, is as safe as it can be. Okay. Just replacing that one thing, what, what kind of cost is that? Uh, the cost for replacing that is, if that's the, the, the river to go, is fairly minimal. A couple thousand dollars. Are you anticipating any legal action against the city over this? We have no comment. Okay. How much money is the city not realizing from pool fees and things like that? Do you guys have a ballpark on that? Uh, not this time. I mean, uh, we haven't sat back and analyzed it. We know kind of what happened when we were shut down in the summer in terms of, of loss. Uh, we really haven't got to that part yet. We've been focusing on the situation at hand, so that's, that will come soon. And what happens to the staff that can't look at the pool? Then? We'll, we'll have to look at our staffing levels and we'll have to adjust accordingly. Yeah. Yeah. You know what, I just want to say something about our staff. I mean, this, nobody asked for this to happen, obviously, you know, and uh, it's a tragic event, and I think that, as I, I said earlier, that the, the first priority has always been the safety and the well-being of, of the children that were affected, and of course the parents and the, and the staff. But uh, I'm very confident that the staff, I mean, and this, this team that's even just uh, sitting around the table and, and, and help me prepare this information and, um, so that we could release it. Uh, I think that we've got a, an excellent, uh, excellent staff.